What's up, guys? Day twenty-five here. We're back in the uh, we're back in the cabbage patch. Gonna play F4, 1086 currently. Very good day ahead of us. We are gonna hope to break eleven hundred. It's time to go. We gotta break eleven hundred. It's it's really time to go. You know what I mean? Like. FTV Claude, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Okay, what is uh what is happening here? Do we have a bird abort? It's time to go. All right, no bird abort. For bishop d6, d4, um, you can go for this so long as you can go for this in two situations, right? Either you're okay with the stonewall, stonewall is if they're able to play d5. In this case, though, my decision doesn't have to be so committal because I know that his pawn isn't coming to d5 anytime soon, so I can take my time to push e4 a bit later. Notice that with each of these moves, I'm trying to get them all up in one go, in one swing. We're going to have an enormous base advantage now. e5, already the bishop is in trouble. I'm probably going to push d5 next. This, this is already on the border of being a disaster. d5, nice move. If he lets me, I'm going to play c4. Or even advance to d6. He's, he could be in a lot of trouble. He needs to take. But even then I take back with the queen. Uh, and this gets to a really classic type of structure here in which he's just pushed his c-pawn too far and he's lost his e-pawn. He's going to have lots of weaknesses on the d-file. Very uncomfortable position for him at the moment, if I may say so myself. Well, we're waiting. Okay, knight h6, that cannot be good. Look at this, we're pushing d6, bishop has to go back to f8. He's just getting completely walled in here. Knight c3. This is already very close to the end of the game. Knight b5, knight c7 could decide at any moment. He is completely stuck here already. Very uncomfortable position for him at the moment. g6. All right, let's play knight b5. Trying to drill into c7. Man has to play knight a6. Man better play knight a6 immediately. Because it's time to go. This is such an ugly position. I'm going to build a wall against this knight next. But I guess I have to watch out for this break. There, There is this one last break in this position with f6. So I do need to be a little careful here. How are we going to play this? Um... Let's play bishop d3. I'm aiming to put the bishop on e4. Yeah, this this looks completely fine for, for white. I actually do need to watch out. Like, f6 is going to be a very annoying move eventually. Um, I don't want this knight coming to b4, but I don't need to worry about it just yet. Knight, is gonna, knight can still go to c7 whenever it needs to. Let's castle here. I'm trying to eventually play knight g5 and play bishop e4, trade the pieces off, and sit with a knight on this, this golden e4 square. I do need to watch out for this f6 move though. f6 is going to be annoying. Sooner or later it's going to be annoying. I think I already botched this a little. I'm sorry to say guys, but I botched this. I let the wind slip through my fingertips. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? Um, of course we have, there are a lot of weaknesses here. Just put the knight on g5. If queen c6, I have bishop e4. He could play c4. Yikes. c4. c4 is a big problem. I was not looking. I was not paying attention. <laughs> Guys, I was not paying attention at all. He could play c4 and the, the game gets... I think I'm just losing after c4. Yeah, c4 is wild. c4, I'm going to need to to just start sacking... C4, I'm going to have to play bishop e3 and sack a piece. I just did not process that after c4, he's threatening the bishop and he's threatening queen c5. I got to bring my A game. I uh, I definitely lost some focus there. But I think, okay, the flip side is that after takes takes, I can play rook c1. I think I still have enormous compensation there at the end of the day. I'm not actually sure how bad my position is. Rook c1 is going to be very annoying. But oh, he has queen c6. Queen c6, I'm losing. I'm dead lost. I should have taken with the queen. I'm just not calculating. 
That's insane if I get my first loss. Um, of course, this this had to be winning before. Okay, knight f5. Let me play rook c1 now while I still can. Please kick. do not allow the queen to get to c6. Knight takes e3. I'll play rook takes c8, and we'll deal with that position when it comes. There's st there's some issues in that position as well, but overall, okay, this is, this is a much better situation to deal with. Drop the bishop back to f2 here. I could play knight e4, knight f6 if I need to. Queen b7. I'm going to play queen a4. This is a completely wild position. Yeah, I got to I got to start like uh focusing. <laughs> I got to start focusing. I'm at the rating now. I need to start focusing. I'm shocked that I wasn't able to just steamroll this guy. Like, once you get a pawn to d6, normally this is the end of the game. But in this case, yeah, I don't know. All I can say is you live and you learn. And today I lived, and tomorrow I'll learn. Should I play knight d4? What should I do? I, I want to sacrifice, honestly. Sacrificing looks so cool. I don't know... I don't know what's going to happen, but I think if I sacrifice there... Yeah, this looks amazing. Let's just go for it. I have no idea what's gonna, whether it's going to work or not, but this is their best piece. One of my main ideas is I'm going to play queen f3, and if he takes another piece, I can check and start picking up some material. I can start picking up some goodies. Then give me two of those. Give me six of those. So yeah, after takes, I play queen f3. He plays queen d7, and then the idea there is that he can't really do anything. He is completely stuck, mechanically speaking. Um... Let's play queen f3 here. It's a wild position. <laughs> Completely wild position. Down a full rook at the moment, but I have a lot of compensation here. And yeah, as mentioned before, if he takes, I play queen c6. Knight can still not move. If knight moves, then I play knight c7. He plays knight h6. No, knight h6, that carries no purpose. He plays queen d7. Queen d7, what's going to happen? Yeah, there's some massive discomfort in his position at the moment. This position is just bananas. I do not know what he's thinking about. If he plays rook c8, I take on a7. He only has one move in this position, and that is queen d7. Sir, just play queen d7 and stop, stop waiting. Stop stalling the game. Look at these knights. These knights just posted up on these knight five squares. Okay, he blundered it. That's a check. He's about to start dropping massive amounts of material. I'm just winning now. Queen d7, I'm going to take, take. I'm going to be threatening this and this. He had put up a very good defense, though. I want to look at the game review. There must have been a way for me to just completely steamroll him from that position with the pawn on d6. At one point, yeah, if he had played queen c6 at the right time, I think I'm dead lost there if he had played queen c6. So this game taught me to be humble, and it taught me that anything, anyone that I'm playing at this level can beat me. So I got to be careful, and I got to be humble. Threatening this mate here. Threatening this mate. The mate is very hard to stop. I'm also threatening this knight. Probably has to play queen d7. I'll throw in a check and start taking some more pieces. All right. That's checkmate. It's time to go. Let's look at the game review. I was definitely losing for, for a moment there. Yeah, look at that. The brief moment. <laughs> that brief moment over there. Um, okay, but right here. So what am I supposed to do? Knight g5 is a mistake. What am I supposed to do? Tell me chess.com. To kick a bishop. What do you mean kick a bishop? You allowed the opponent to kick... Oh, to kick a bishop with c4. I have to play c4 then. Yeah, c4 was critical. I didn't like the fact that this gave the knight this square, but the knight cannot move itself anytime soon because of knight c7. You gotta pick your poison in this type of situation. Either let the pawn move or let the knight in, and I had chosen the wrong one. 
I can always later play a3. Yeah, this would have been better. Um, I'm also wondering though, how am I going to deal if he just plays... If he just plays bishop g7 and f6, what am I going to do here? a3, f6, and then what? Interesting. I just hold on to the uh, I just hold on to the center. Takes takes. I'm much better here at the end of the day. I have some good squares. If he chooses to exchange that f pawn, now my bishop can finally survey that diagonal. All right, let's keep it going. 1086. 1086. We're like somewhere around 20 minutes in. Let's keep it going. F4. Let's break 1100. We're on the cusps of 1100 here. The oh, I call this the rambunctious steed in my course. All right, well, that's that's just bad. This is also actually covered in my course, believe it or not. Um, we're gonna play d4. I want it, I just love having this e-pawn on the board. I'm not gonna trade it off. Okay, so here he's threatening to take and play queen h4. I could play knight d2. Knight d2 would work, also e3 would be fine. c3 would also be fine, actually. Yeah, let's just play c3 and reinforce the pawn that way. Takes. Um, takes queen h4. I always have g3. There's no, there's a check there, but it doesn't do anything. He's gonna really be suffering here. F5. Let's play queen b3. Attack this pawn. Attack this pawn. Has to play knight a5, but then I can retreat my queen, and he sort of misplaced his knight then. Yeah, I'm up a really critical pawn here. This guy, yeah, this is an important lesson. Um, I see this happen all the time, and I'm also sort of guilty of this. You get this one idea in your head, and then you just go for it full steam without any regard to what's happening in the position. Of course, he's he's just hell-bent on this one check here, and the check doesn't even do anything. If I had to, I could just run with my king. But it's a really classic uh, pitfall for for players. So I hope you guys jotted that down. I'm going to play bishop e3 here. Keep an eye on this pawn. I'm going to take this pawn next. All right, let's take here. Attack this knight and this pawn. Knight a5, I'll play queen. I play queen a6. Yeah, attack the knight. Attack a lot of these squares. I'll push the, the knight out with b4 sooner or later. Alright, b4. Fantastic. Knight is kicked. He's taken a few pawns. I'll just take back. Check. Check doesn't do anything. He finally got the check he wanted. Unfortunately, it still doesn't do anything. I bet you he's going to play queen f4. He's going to go for another check. This is the one queen attack. This is the one queen attack, after all. Uh, we're going to play knight d2. Still absolutely no threats. The knight has nowhere to go, and even if it did, queen takes c6 looms. All right, uh, here, let's take with a check. Got to make sure it's a check, though. He is threatening mate. He is threatening mate here. King f7, I'm going to take with another check. I am wondering when he is going to throw in the towel here. G7, let's throw in another check. King h6, I'll throw in another check, and I think I'm going to check mate. That looks like checkmate, pal. Oh, he could play knight of, knight of six would have been better, but here now he is getting checkmated. That's so ironic that he's the one getting checkmated with my queen coming to h4. It's time to go. Uh, all right, so we'll end this one here. We finally broke 1100. Day number 25 is in the books. I'll see you guys tomorrow or some other time for day number 26. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone, and bye-bye then. I think we all experienced our own ballet today. Ballet of emotion, feeling.